Let's open the public hearing on House Bill 1778, relative registration of commercial motor vehicles and operator driver's licenses. Welcome, Representative Marble. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And Happy New Year, everybody. We got a new year here, so we can revisit something that uh, should have been attended to a couple of years ago, but it hasn't. And it's uh, something that uh, it has to be made aware to the public who is totally unaware of what their rights are now. And that's the whole purpose of what's here. So let me begin by saying what House Bill 1778 is not. It doesn't charge any taxes. It doesn't change anything that now exists as a statute. The statutes already exist. It doesn't change any Supreme Court rulings, which already exist, not only here, but in the Supreme Court thesis, which you will find uh, on this document, which everybody should have now. And it's really a concise, let me read it, a concise, in the first paragraph, of what we're discussing. The following four pages, which you'll see here, are all court cases throughout the entire country which support the right to travel without interruption from a government official. Government officials are appointed. They're not elected like you and I. I'm sorry, I should say it's the official. We are the officials. We're elected by the people to protect the people from the average and greed of the appointed corporate employees of the state government. Now, the state government is a corporation. Part two of our Constitution is the charter of that corporation. We are compelled to and take an oath to support and maintain that Constitution. And that Constitution delegates to the government only commercial use of the highway. It's a co jurisdiction issue. So although this proposal does not change anything that does not already exist, but the public has been continually made unaware of what their rights are. So this is an effort to educate the public into their option. They can continue to pay the town three or four hundred dollars or whatever it is as a town tax on their automobile. Why? There's no tax on consumer goods. Chief Justice Grimes affirmed that in 1967. Do you realize how many millions of dollars that the citizens or inhabitants of this state have paid to a town when they don't have to? Now, if you want to, you can contribute, but you do not have to and cannot be compelled to pay a tax to the local municipality for your automobile. And this is all in the records here, that you'll see here. Consumer goods. I define under the UCC as automobile. Automobiles are consumer goods. What for public use? I mean, use to travel on the highways. Now, there's a difference between a license, CDL license, commercial. The state has total control over all commercial use of the highways, but they have no jurisdiction over the right to travel. Representative, come up. Good morning, committee. Good morning. Director, my name is Ed Camo, representing Brookfield, Wakefield, Oski, and Eppingham. And I'm just going to cut to the chase here. Um, the Uniform Commercial Code is not some mystical, pseudo legal codification. It's real, and the state is not following those laws. So when you make your decision, just make sure that you research the Uniform Commercial Code, the statute that New Hampshire has already. Um, Passed to say they'll actually follow it, and that's all in the testimony. It needs to be, the state needs to follow the codes. Very model of efficiency and brevity. Thank you. Have another here. Thank you very much. Director Bailaki. Good morning. Good morning. It is good to see all of you and happy new year. For the record, Elizabeth Yelaki, I am director of Motor Vehicles. And yes, I do have a stack of cards for today. <laughs> I'm trying to uh, plan ahead, but I will hold them until then. This is nice. I get confused easily. <laughs> um, this morning I would like to speak in opposition to HB 1778. Uh, I believe all of you have the fiscal note that the department has prepared in front of you. 
and not only will this still have a significant revenue impact, reducing state revenues by a little over $100 million each fiscal year, and municipal revenues by over $250 million each fiscal year. But more importantly, this, this bill really will have a significant safety impact on all of us, on all of the residents of the state, as well as the visitors and those that come on vacation in the state. The bill proposes a repeal of a number of provisions that are currently in the statute, including the driver licensing provision, so only those driving commercial motor vehicles would be required to hold a license. So in essence, there would be no need to test anyone to ensure that they are a fit driver. There would be really no way to suspend or revoke any, uh, anybody's driver's license. So there will be no way to enforce um, those people that some of us would consider unfit drivers. So those individuals would now be allowed to be on the road without any type of privilege or card that would allow them to continue that. In addition, it also repeals the provision that re requires the registration of motor vehicles. So from a law enforcement perspective, it will be really problematic for public safety, as there would be no way of identifying vehicles potentially involved in crimes, stolen vehicles, and so forth. You would merely be going on the year, make, and model, potentially in the color of the vehicle, but there would be no other identifying information for police officers to be able to pursue those vehicles involved in crimes. I could go on, but in the interest of time, I will stop right here. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer those. Thank you, Director. I have a question. If we were to pass this and I decided not to get a driver's license, well, I, I wouldn't be able to get one, would I? If I also wanted car insurance, would I still be able to get it? I'm not sure if I can speak to that. Um, I, I am not sure how, what that would mean for insurance okay. purposes. Fair enough. Representative Warnes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for taking my question. Um, would we be able to enjoy reciprocity with the other states? So, for example, if I don't need a driver's license in New Hampshire, would I be able to then travel to Massachusetts and uh, not be beholden to their licensing requirements? I don't believe you would be able to do that. I believe that if you entered another state without a valid privilege to drive in another state, you would be subject to sanctions, being stopped, being arrested for driving without a license in that state. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Representative Horn. You did uh, take my question. I thought that was very good because I, I do understand there is a compact at Nashua, uh, not Nashua, but New Hampshire is in with all the states and the reciprocity of all the laws and stuff like that. And I could possibly see this affecting that. But down to get down to my question, I heard in some of the testimony, is anybody stopping the free will of people to drive in this state? to operate their motor vehicle? Is there on cars on the highway or anything else like that to stop free travel? You know. Currently. Um, yes, okay. sir. Yes, there is. There is one person testifying right now. Thank you. Okay, no, well, he asked the question. I, uh, That's not how it works here, thanks. Not that I am aware of. Thank you. Dick. <laughs> Director, what does the right to travel mean? From this bill's perspective? From, from the point of view of that it's a constitutional right to travel, I think that is well established. So what does that mean? The director's not a constitutional lawyer. Hmm. Given, she's the head of the Department of Motor Vehicles. Uh, right, and, and her job description does not require her to be a legal scholar. Hmm. She works for the commission as a state, and we have three minutes left. I believe that would be about a 25-minute answer if done briefly. Mm -hmm. Representative True, yeah, we have three minutes left in this hearing, and one person would still like to speak. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you for taking my question, Director. If this were to pass, how would you differentiate between uh, consumer goods? Say somebody, say me driving my car as, as a consumer good, and then going to work in my car. How would the state, how would the state divide, anyway, of dividing that? I don't believe there would be, uh, other than enforcement and determining things, that the purpose of your travel, there would really be no other way of identifying that. Um, and again, I'm not sure the intent of the bill would be to determine whether you are traveling to or from work. This is for commercial purposes only, so you would have to use your vehicle for commercial purposes. Other questions? Thank you, Director. Thank you. Ian Freeman? 